fall renovations are here and it's time to aerate and overseed. Following these steps are going to be critical to getting your lawn to where it wants to be and experiencing the ultimate lawn care success. So let's get out of the weeds. I just hit uh, 500 subscribers uh, and so I just want to thank those of you who have taken the time to uh, hit the subscribe button and watch my videos. I really do appreciate it. All the comments and stuff that I get, the feedback and that, um, it really does mean so much to me. Um, I really do uh, appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. So thank you guys. So over Labor Day weekend, I rented an aerator with a few of my friends and I had several yards that I got to work on and get a lot of good content uh, for this channel. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Check it out. Okay, so I'm getting ready to I do some aeration here in just a little bit. First thing you want to do though, if you have any kind of irrigation heads uh, for an in-ground sprinkler system or if you just have kind of anything in your lawn that you do not want the uh, aerator to hit, make sure you mark them. So I always end up saving these utility flags anytime I've had my uh, property marked and so I just use them as, as marking points for the irrigation heads so that way when I'm running the aerator I don't just get in the zone and forget and next thing I know I'm blasting one of my uh, sprinkler heads with my aerator and running into a whole different set of problems. So any obstacles in your lawn that you need to uh, mark just be sure to mark them somehow ahead of time so that way you don't forget while you're aerating. Okay now to the main attraction. Right here we got ourselves a 27 inch core aerator. And so this thing is an absolute beast. So you see here, you just got your motor here up on top. So that's how you're gonna be starting it. Very similar to kind of how you're gonna be starting like your lawnmower. Then in the front here, you got this little barrel right here that's kind of as like a counterweight to the whole thing. And let me, as I spin it around here. And so then you can see right here, it's actually a place where you can uh, pull this plug out and you can actually fill this with water if you want to add extra weight to it. Now, my lawn's very well irrigated, so I don't think I really need the extra weight, but if your lawn is pretty uh, hard, you may want to fill that with water just to get that any extra weight that you can. So then too, on the sides here, they got these removable weights that can just slide right out, or slide in, if you want extra weight. So overall, this is a much heavier and bigger machine than what your typical push lawnmower is. They do make a smaller version of this. This is 27 inches. They do make an 18 inch um, that you can get that looks identical to this. It's just way smaller and lighter. So if you are doing just say one yard or it's a smaller yard, I'd recommend going with 18 inch just because it'll be a lot easier to maneuver than what this is going to be. Um, this thing's an absolute monster uh, to move around. So now just to show you guys how this is going to work, it's going to work very similar to kind of what you're used to with your lawnmower. Once you have this started, you're going to just pull this back and hold it down to engage the tines on the bottom. So as soon as you pull that down, it's going to get those tines moving. And so it's going to be self-propelled just from these tines starting to dig into the ground and pull up the cores and it's going to propel this forward thing to pay attention to what everybody kind of experiences this when they rent these is that if you just full blast pull that down this thing will take off very quick and can easily tear up your lawn just because you need to ease into it so whenever you're first getting started with it ease on this a little bit so that it, it, they, they get gently going and not just firing up real fast the next important thing when operating this is this bar here this bar controls the tines dropping and coming up and so you can see right now there's wheels on each side right now those wheels are down so like I can push it along like cement or anything and the tines aren't touching the ground but this thing so when you're ready to operate it you push it down and it pops those wheels up off the ground and now it's resting on the tines with aerating the more holes you poke the better so if you can do a double or triple pass on your lawn it's just going to help things out so you, what you'll do is just switch it up by almost like three mowing patterns go the length of your lawn then go across it the other way and then do a final pass diagonal get as many 
uh, holes in your lawn as you possibly can because this will just really help airflow get in there, seed get in there, fertilizer get in there, and really help increase your results. Now, if you're paying somebody to do this, you will pay a little bit of an, of an extra fee to have them do a double or triple pass. Um, if you just pay for what the standard is, it'll be a single pass. So that is the advantage when you rent your own is that you'll be able to do as many passes as you'd like. The other thing is renting your own can be very cost effective if you're going in with a few people. For me example, I have four people that I'm going in with this uh, aerator on. Now I may be doing most of the actual physical running of this, but I have other people here trying to help uh, take down the cost for me. We're all able to kind of share the cost of it. So if you have a few people in your neighborhood, this is a great kind of bonding experience because you will all bond over the pain of running these aerators. Um, it is actually a lot of fun, but it does wear you out. So just be ready. So first we start, we have our on off switch. This thing will not turn on unless it's over to the on. So make sure that's switched. Oftentimes when you're running it, it'll be in the off position. So remember, if it's not starting for you, flip it to on. So now you're really just gonna be starting this thing like you do your lawnmower. Once you make sure it's on, uh, you have your throttle adjustment over here. From the, You see the tort there's a tortoise and a rabbit here. And so what you can do is go, and what you're gonna to do to start it is just pull this. You do not need to be holding anything else to start this. All you're gonna be doing is pulling this to start it. I just noticed something as I was running this. I didn't have this throttle all the way forward. I had it back like here. Man, that made a huge difference in how it sounds. So that's one thing to pay attention. It makes it, I was thought I thought this thing seemed a little underpowered, but watch how this bad boy runs now. So I just got done aerating my lawn, so you can actually see kind of where it was poking holes. What I want you to notice is, I'll get down close here, and grab one of these cores. So what you're gonna notice, you're gonna start having all these cores. I'm gonna grab another one. You're gonna have all these cores all over your lawn. And so what you wanna do is you just leave these cores, because what'll happen is over time, they'll just break back down. And so you're gonna see these cores laying all over your grass, and so, that's what you're going to want to see. If you're doing it and you're not seeing any cores, well, chances are you're doing something wrong. Um, so you should see some pretty good sized cores and that laying all over your lawn. And like I said, just leave those there and they'll break down. And even though the lawn looks beat up and stuff right now, it doesn't take very long before the lawn will really start to recover nicely and you'll really see the results uh, from all your hard work. Okay, so I just got done running the aerator. Everything's looking good. I did as many passes as I could, and now it's time to do your seeding. Now, if you're seeding from bare ground, it's gonna be a little bit different than when you're over seeding. They're gonna be two different rates. So I have my grass seed bag here, but whatever grass you have, check the bag to look for what the difference on the seeding rates are. So for those of you that are gonna be seeding just on new ground, the rate's gonna be higher than what it's gonna be for over seeding just already established turf. So pay attention to what that setting is because you're gonna to wanna to adjust that setting uh, for whatever seed spreader you have. Now, if you're brand new to this, I recommend getting just the like basic Scott's broadcast spreader. It just has a nice orange knob with a, a nice orange dial that has different numbers on it and you just can look at the bag, set the number to it, fill it up and go. Um, and it's just a, an easy, foolproof way uh, to put down seed, fertilizer, everything you're going to need. Um, 
And so I definitely recommend that if you're just starting out. And so for me here, so for me here, I got a 50 pound bag of grass seed that I'm gonna be putting all over my lawn. And for me, for the most part, I'm going to be overseeding, but I do have some spots that have died off that I'm actually going to be seeding pretty much from new ground. So what I personally like to do is I like to go and I want to target those areas first specifically before I just start putting the rest of the bag all over my lawn. So you can see here, this is the grass that I'm using. It's a uh, RTF. Uh, so it's all turf type tall fescue. And uh, some of that tall fescue will actually uh, has rhizomes, so it's actually it can uh, spread as well. And so this is a, a good high quality grass seed I, I found here at a uh, local uh, landscape supply store. And so that's what I'm gonna be using on my grass today. So what I personally like to do is actually just get a little bit of the grass seed poured into a bucket and then go and work on your bare ground areas first. And I like to, if they're just small, I like to just kind of do them by hand real nice and easy. So I'm not really following a specific seeding rate. Um, with seed, you can be a little heavy handed uh, if you want to. Just don't go so crazy on it that you're smothering out the seed and just wasting a bunch. But you want to get good coverage over the areas. And so if you just have small areas like this, that's why I like to just get a bucket and just kind of do it by hand over those areas uh, just to try to make sure they get good covered. too crazy on them but make sure you get those bare areas uh, covered pretty good so then once you go around and you go and get some of those bare areas covered just by by hand a little bit then take whatever's left that you have of seed and then just do the overseeding at the overseeding rate for the rest of your lawn now if you're doing a brand new uh, lawn from no grass at all you just want to follow that new seeding rate over the entire lawn and then you can just fill up the hopper and do it but for when you just have kind of little patch areas i like to just kind of go in there and do it by hand to make sure those areas aren't getting overlooked uh, whenever you're doing your overseeding okay so now once you've done any areas that are just kind of from bare ground or areas that you were dead that you just wanted to put some seed down and did it by hand now is when you would start following your overseed rate for the rest of your established grass so now what you want to do is dump your fertilizer into your hopper and make sure you have it set at the proper setting to be able to run yours now my uh, seed spreader here is going to be a little bit different than what the scots is it doesn't have a dial mine has number settings that i set up here uh, to adjust how wide the openings are and so for whatever seed spreader you have make sure you're using the proper number and you load it up at that number and then begin to overseed just like you would put down fertilizer and so what you want to do is just make sure you're walking with a pretty good pace you don't want a nice slow uh, Sunday stroll you want to put a little bit of your butt into it as you're walking a little walk with a little bit of pace and that would be the perfect speed my starter fertilizer and so today I'm going to be using a 16 28 12 and so if you've watched from my previous videos uh, you know that the 16 is 16 percent nitrogen 28 is 28 percent phosphorus and 12 percent potassium and so that's what I'm getting in here uh, in this and so this is a 50 pound bag and this is going to pretty much cover my whole entire lawn now if you see here my coverage is going to be five pounds per thousand square feet to cover a 10,000 square foot lawn. 
So what that's going to be is, so I want to use this column for my spreader setting. So it would be depending on what size lawn you'd have to adjust this. So I'm going to do 5 pounds per thousand to get 10,000 square feet of coverage. And then you would just find your uh, spreader that you're using down here, and this would be the number. So depending if you had one of the Scott's ones, depending which one it was, you would just flip it to either the 7.5 number or the 6.5, whatever it may be. And so you would just follow the setting. And so now I want to kind of get into a little bit of when I made my mistake uh, a couple weeks ago when I said I'd burn out my lawn with fertilizer. So I, I'm not use, tip, I don't typically use a Scott's uh, spreader for mine. I typically, this is my spreader, my home spreader if I'm using it. Um, and so what it does is it has these settings here. And so I just turn this and then I adjust it, the slider, and then this here opens and closes of the holes and so it works a little bit differently also with this type of a spreader it can get out of whack on its calibration so the numbers aren't always uh, perfectly accurate depending on what the bag says and so what I do to make sure that I get the right amount of fertilizer down is I typically when I'm taking my time I need to weigh it out for each section of my lawn to make sure I'm getting the proper amount of fertilizer so if I always just weigh out the right amount of fertilizer for each section of my lawn it helps to prevent me from ever really over applying my fertilizer. Let me show you what I mean. So whenever I'm taking my time and doing it right, I have a, I have a luggage scale. I use a five gallon bucket and then my fertilizer. So the first thing I always want to do is first find out what the bucket weighs empty. And so I'll hook my luggage scale up to it, pick it up, <clears throat> and I got 1.8 on the luggage scale. So my bucket by itself weighs 1.8 pounds. And so that's my starting point. Now, what I have to do is I have to figure out how many pounds of fertilizer I need on each section of my lawn. Because I've measured my lawn uh, multiple times, I know what each section is. So for example, right behind me here is just my backyard. In this section, it's 2,500 square feet to cover the whole backyard. So to do the math, I need five pounds per thousand square feet. So if I have a thousand square feet, five pounds, 2000 square feet, 10 pounds, and then now another 500, so two and a half pounds. So I have 12 and a half pounds that I need in here. Now, if I take, if I put 12 and a half pounds in here, and then I weigh this, I also have to add the 1.8 on top of that. And so if I have 12 and a half plus the one, gives me the 13 and a half plus eight gives me to 14.3. So I want to pour enough fertilizer into the bucket and get that to say 14.3. And that's the perfect amount that'll go on this backside lawn. So that'll help to prevent me from ever over applying. And I hit it right on 14.3, or I got 14.4. So just barely over what I need. And so typically you can add a little bit extra on top of that number, just because you're not gonna get out every single bit of fertilizer in the hopper whenever you're running it. Once you get down to the end, stuff's not really coming out as much. So you can add a pound or two kind of in there, just because that's gonna be a pound or two that's kind of sitting around just on the bottom of your uh, seed spreader. And so after that, you just load it up, start applying at the number that I think it is. And so with mine, I'm going to start with my number right around the 20 or so. And then I'm going to see how the fertilizer is kind of coming out. If I feel like it's coming out a little bit too slow, I'll bump up the number a little bit to kind of get it at that right amount so that on one pass through, I can use all the fertilizer I put in my orange bucket and use it on the back lawn to give me a perfect application. still have a decent bit of fertilizer left in the hopper and so that tells me that I need to actually increase my number a little bit because I still have a good bit left and so 
what I want to do just to finish off this one is just change the directions of which way I was putting down my fertilizer so that way I keep it an even uh, spread. So I'll just start going the opposite way that I was going. And now, as I do further, further sections on my lawn, I'm going to bump up that number a little bit to give me the perfect rate so that way I don't have to do multiple passes different directions just to use up all the fertilizer in the hopper. Then lastly, no good yard job is complete without a little bit of peat moss. Now what I use peat moss for is for in those areas that were dead that you're seeding from bare ground where there's not grass there to help hold things in. Uh, peat moss is going to be what I use as a substitute to what you typically see straw. Now I like peat moss for a couple of reasons. One, I think it looks better than straw. Two, I like how it just lays on there nice. And then another thing, I like how easy it is to put down. And then another thing that I like is that when peat moss gets wet, it gets heavy. So it helps hold uh, your seed and everything in there. One concern that you typically have anytime you're seeding, especially if uh, you have any kind of slope or anything, is if you get a heavy rainfall to wash away all your good seed, which can happen. And so I like peat moss for the fact that whenever it rains, it starts to get thick and heavy and helps to just hold everything in there. It does a good job of simulating that seed to soil contact, which that new grass seed needs. And so it just holds everything in there and it just looks uh, nice and neat and clean. So I actually like it over straw. And so I always have peat moss with me anytime I'm doing a seeding job. So now with peat moss, don't go crazy and put it on real thick. Just give everything a nice thin layer. It spreads real nice and easy. It's real, uh, it's real ground up, and so it just spreads real easy. And so you just want a nice thin layer in that, just to cover the seed a little bit. You've already done your fertilizing. You've already done your seeding. You've done your aerating. And so this is just dessert to top everything off, to give it a nice finished look there. And so that's really all you got to do. So just go around to those bare areas that you had and just sprinkle a little bit of peat moss over top. Now, if you go and you get a heavy rain or so, you may have to go and, and replace, put some more peat moss here. So just check it throughout the next week as you're starting to water your, your areas. Begin to just check it and make sure that you're still seeing some peat moss there. If you need to, uh, throw a little bit more on there, but just don't go too heavy with it. You don't want to smother everything out. Just put a nice, thin, easy layer. So. I just got done with my lawn. Um, you can see peat moss, everything. If you don't look a little bit dirty after this, you're probably not doing it right. <laughs> so I got done, I'm all finished up. And now I wanna just quickly talk about what's next. So now that everything's done, I wanna try to stay off my lawn as long as possible, especially since I put down all that new seed and especially those areas that where there was no grass at all. So what you wanna do between now and the next time that I have to mow is that you want to keep watering your lawn with grass seed. The number one thing that is going to make your grass seed not germinate and fail at your seeding job is not getting enough water. This is absolutely critical. Um, I would say it's probably a very, 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 very high percentage of uh, people that have a bad experience with grass seed is because they did not do enough water. Now with grass seed, what you want to do is you want to keep it continually wet. Now not soaked, so not like when I talk about uh, deep and infrequent watering where you're putting down a half inch. Now you're not just putting down a half inch every day on this thing, but what you want to do is typically you want to do nice short waterings for it and just keep it wet. You do not want to let it dry out. The problem what will happen is, is people just throw down grass seed and then they don't really do any watering and then they don't get any results and they're like, man, this is crap, must have just been crap seed. Well, it probably wasn't crap seed, it was probably, or it could have been crap seed, but it probably was a little bit of not proper watering. So typically, ideally, in a perfect world, what you would like to do is to water about three times a day for roughly about 10 to 15 minutes, just enough to get the area wet 
and move on, not like a deep soaking water. You just want to get that new grass seed wet because that's what it needs uh, to know that, hey, it's safe to germinate and then it's going to pop up some baby grasses and we're going to be doing good. So what you want to do is like for me, what I'm going to try to do is set my irrigation system to run like 15 minutes in each section in the morning. 15 minutes each section in mid like around midday and then 15 minutes each section for like in the evening and so I know that those of you who do not have in-ground irrigation systems this sounds like a, a, an impossible task and I understand you don't have to be perfect at it just try to get to it as often as you can hopefully throughout this next couple weeks you'll also get a little bit of rain help and that'll also help to alleviate the pressure that it puts on you to water your grass now how often you're going to have to keep this up is going to be dependent on what uh, grass type that you're planted if you planted kentucky bluegrass that can take 20 to 25 days it can be over three weeks before you would ever see it germinate so you've got to be really really patient with that if you're doing perennial rye that's literally four days sometimes you'll start to see that and so it can be very very quick if you're uh, turf type tall fescue and some of those other ones it can be like 10 to 14 days so depending on what your grass seed mix uh, you want to just keep it going until you start to see that germination and then you can back it off and start to kind of work yourself to your normal schedule just be patient with it a lot of cool season grass seed mixes have a little bit of both so you might have kentucky bluegrass in there but it's also mixed with perennial rye and so you start to see a little bit come up but you're like eh, that's not that, that great well it's because that kentucky bluegrass hasn't even popped in yet so just kind of be patient with it Keep consistently getting your watering down and you will have great successes. There's a beautiful lawn hiding in underneath all this rubble right now of all this mess of aerating, all the stuff we've done to our lawn. There's a beautiful lawn hiding under there, underneath there waiting to bust out and it will soon. So just you wait. And so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. There's going to be lots more to come over the coming weeks. I still have a major project uh, to do at my parents' house back in Ohio. So that's going to be coming up here within another week or two. And so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next time when we get out of the weeds into a beautiful lawn.